Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ruby, and this is another Feed the Beast tutorial. It was requested in the comments multiple times uh, on a bunch of my machine tutorials to do kind of a Feed the Beast easy power guide. So, this is what we're doing today. I have four different setups um, in this video. These are four that I found probably would be the easiest routes to take early on in the game. There are some things that I'm going to use on some of these, like you see a bunch of golden pipe. The golden pipe's not allowed. I just do it so that the tutorial will flow faster and things of that nature. So, let's get right into it. I'm going to go through these in the order that I believe would be the best for the, you know, kind of the best bang for your buck. So, the first one we're going to take a look at is lava. And now, if this was a tutorial made months ago, <laughs> or on a different pack, I'm on the ultimate pack just an FYI and I would have told you to use solar panel solar panel solar panel solar panel but it's 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 been nerfed heavily they're not that easy and they're kind of expensive to get into now like uh, the advanced ones require UU matter already so that of course is not gonna make it onto this list and the uh, little blue solar panels they're not worth anything so the first one we're gonna go over is lava now here we have a liquid tesseract you can also use like a liquid transposer or an ender tank or something like that to be able to transport this lava from the nether into the overworld. There is a prerequisite though. You'll need a chunk loader so that you can both keep your power generation station chunk loaded and so you can keep your pumps chunk loaded. Uh, I have four pumps. You really only need one. I believe even on Hypermine, the uh, little server I'm on, we only have one pump that's pumping and it's supplying all of us enough lava so I don't believe you need four I just have four because I have a bunch of other stuff going on in my tutorial world that depends on lava so I would rather have an abundance than not enough so you won't need four you could probably get away with one or two if you're a heavy user so let's go over this setup real fast now you can use magmatic engines however I found them to uh, freeze up too much and I hate going to the nether. Now it's not that bad here because we're really low and there wouldn't be any gas spawning down here. And of course at a lava lake there are no uh, zombie pigmen, you know, swimming around. So the setup is I have four redstone engines powering a pump, the buildcraft pump. Let me show you the recipe real fast. Oops, I'm in caps lock. It's uh, a mining well and a tank. And a mining well is just three iron, an iron pickaxe, an iron gear, and some redstone. And then I just have some waterproof pipe going into this liquid tesseract. Like I said earlier, the golden pipe is not required. I just use it so that it'll it'll make it go faster for me in this tutorial. So that's the lava setup. And then you see I have a chunk loader here. This is absolutely vital because as soon as you leave the nether and you go back into the overworld, you're not going to be pumping any lava through anymore. So you'll want to keep this chunk loaded. So if we go ahead and hop on up. Back to the overworld. Doo, 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 doo. We need some elevator music. There we go. Alright. And let's hop on back over here. Okay. So then I'm pumping it into this Zycraft tank. It doesn't have to be a Zycraft tank. You can pump it into an iron tank from Railcraft. It kind of depends on what you. How come I can't? Hey guys, I'm back. I don't know what happened. But uh, as I was saying, you just want a tank for the buffer. You could always hook up your liquid tesseract straight into your liquiducts. However, if your lava lake that you're pumping runs out of lava, which doesn't happen too often, but if you're pumping a small lake, then it could happen. You'll want to well, you'll, you'll want to tank for a buffer, so that'll give you enough time to go relocate your your pump and your tesseract and stuff. So, uh, I just have a little Zycraft tank. You can use iron tanks, as I said. Uh, if we come on over here, the liquiducts are coming out. And I had to wrench it so you see the little arrow coming down. And then you give it a redstone signal and it's coming down and it's doing a little Y out to these two to these eight uh two these eight magmatic engines. And then you'll want to wrench these conduits so that they're facing out and going into the energy cell. Now the conduits uh are kinda easy to make. It's just kind of a process, like you need some other machines to do it too. So if this is too expensive for you to start out with, then you could always hook up a magmatic engine directly into the the machine that you're trying to power. So for example, hook a magmatic engine straight up to a pulverizer or something like that. 
So, or and you see here, I have it hooked up to an energy cell. So that's always another possibility. Now, the good thing about lava is that it generates both MJ and EU. So we can see that we got a liquid up coming over here, and these are thermal generators and geothermal generators. The geothermal generator is a lot easier to make than the thermal generator. However, these geothermal generators, if we're going to go pull a e, oops, an EU reader real fast. Oh, are you kidding me? I hate this menu. For some reason, my NEI is messing up, so um, I can't use the creative plus one. So here we see it's generating 24, and these are generating 20. So with these two you're only getting an 8 e per tick gain however if you had like a bunch of these or like four of these for example that would kind of make it worth getting the thermal generators because then you're gaining some real power and then I just have it hooked up to glass fiber cable which is then just going into an MFSU so that's uh, pretty simple so let's move on to the next example Let's go ahead and make it day. And I just got a chunk loader here. And as we can see here, we have magmatic engines, magma crucibles, geothermal generators. Now this, uh, you'll probably want to use geothermal generators. I don't really think it's worth using thermal generators here because these just don't produce enough lava for you to do that. So the setup I have is a magma crucible being pumped by a magmatic engine then I have waterproof pipe and then an iron waterproof pipe now the gold's not required you could use stone or cobble I just use gold so it'll flow quicker and then it's just using an iron pipe and then you'll want to wrench it so that the clear side like you see how that's filled in you'll want the clear side to go into the geothermal generator and then I just have glass fiber cable running over to this MFSU so if we go ahead and look over here we'll see it's the same exact thing again I found that four magma crucibles with magmatic engine power works pretty well generates a nice amount of EU this has been going for maybe about an hour and it's got about 1.2 million power now this is the next one uh, this one is the next one this is number three so so far we have one two and here's three now this is kind of a rat's nest <laughs> and this is only with the coal being pulled out if you wanted to put coal automatically in here uh, it would require more pipes and everything like that so I wasn't going to overcomplicate it because with buildcraft pipes it's kinda difficult to automate stuff and not make it overflow so I wasn't going to put that in there to kind of confuse everybody um, a red power would be another good one using like pneumatic tubes um, however it's it's kind of weird dealing with cold coke ovens. You'll want to mess with it a little bit before attempting to do this on a large scale like this. So we have nine cold coke ovens here. And then we have a, a uh, wood pipe coming out of the top of the coke oven. <coughs> Excuse me. And then same thing on the other side. It's pulling it out. Then it goes to an iron pipe, which pushes it to the middle. It's the same thing on all of these, as you can see. And then what it's doing is that it's coming up. It's hitting this little T-junction again. And then it's coming off this way. And then it's coming down, and it's going to the bottom of these generators. Which is then using this copper cable to come up into an MFSU. And it's generating a, actually a nice amount of power. If you have the coal to sacrifice doing this, and I, I believe that this would be a really good way to go about generating power. Now with buildcraft pipes, it's kind of hard to regulate how even the coal coke is distributed among these. So if anything, you could do it yourself or try to figure something out to make it work. I'm honestly not sure. So just make sure that you're inputting the coal coke at the bottom of the generator. Now to move on to the last one. This is, um, you've probably even seen this on other people's videos. Uh, this is a, this is actually a really cool, completely automated system. Once you set this up, you don't have to touch it ever again, other than to say, hook up your MFSU and stuff. So, let's start up here. So, this little three right here, this is an infinite source. These two make it an infinite source in the middle. We have a deployer, which you give it an empty bucket. 
the empty bucket then goes to this filter. If I could click on it. Uh, you can't click on filters. Oh, you, you, yeah, you can. So it's asking, I want full water buckets to come out of here, the, the uh, deployer, and go out into these pneumatic tubes. So I have this big array of pneumatic tubes and a bunch of water mills. Now, let's see how much EU this is generating. Nothing, really. Is it, are any of these? I guess it's too small to, <laughs> to be able to tell. Yeah, that's way too small to be able to tell. So, <laughs> but it's generating eh, about these are th this is 30 water mills, and it's generating 12 EU per tick. So, uh, that's not that good. But this is pretty much the last one. Like, if you have the aluminum for these, like I don't know if y'all have, if you have a uh, Greg Tech, Greg Tech. Oh, I can't. I don't have any eye, any eyes bugging out. But yeah is that manned water mills aka putting water buckets in there is a lot better than just surrounding them in water surrounding them in water still works however that's going to take literally forever it's going to be even less than this 12 eu per tick um now a quick note we have red alloy wire which is controlling these and it's on a sequencer which runs every 0.2 seconds and then the retriever which is the thing that grabs the empty buckets out of the water mills this requires power so I just have some blue alley wire running onto the ground and over here from these solar panels and battery box so let's just get rid of that so we don't have that noise and it's just running on the ground to the seek to the uh, retriever now this uh, all these red power things I believe these water mills require aluminum on most, I believe, I, I don't know if that's the default recipe or if that's just Greg Tech, but um, these kind of aren't very friendly for starters. Uh, you'll have better luck with lava or magma crucibles. So, and it's just copper cable on the top, go into an MFSU, and you'll want to set the redstone for if uh, emit if full. So that way this will uh, fully power this red alloy wire and it'll stop it from uh, sending off full buckets and you, so you won't just be wasting time. So that's the four kind of starter power sources that I believe would work for you. Uh, you can kind of see my tutorial stuff over here. <laughs> and so yeah, this is kind of the starter. Of course, let's recap. Lava the in my opinion the easiest and the cheapest way of going and it generates both MJ and EU the magma crucibles with the magmatic engines you can generate MJ and EU you could just have these uh, you could have the magma crucibles feed lava into more magmatic engines and then just have that produce your MJ so and then now this, this is, uh, the setup I have right here is EU only, of course, because I'm feeding them into generators. Like, if you want to see, like, C14, 12, 2, 5, they don't, they don't kind of distribute evenly. But, and then don't forget, this isn't fully automated. You would still need a system to put coal back into here. So, you'll want to figure that out if y'all need help. Feel free to post any questions in the comments below or send me a private message on YouTube. I read all my comments and all my messages, so I will get to your question. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Hopefully this helps you out, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. On the left is my latest LP episode on the Hypermind server. On the right is my latest machine tutorial on the gene pool. Definitely go check those videos out, guys. Later.